Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> okay. Hey, what's going on everyone? Greg here. And ever since I saw Windows 11 get announced, I really wanted to check it out because there was a lot of visual changes to Windows 11 that I thought made it look more like Mac OS. And I also thought the design looked a lot more modern. It was something I just really wanted to try out, especially as someone who is a Mac guy primarily. I primarily use Mac OS. I've been using Macs for quite some time, but I do have a history with Windows, although I haven't used it for a long time. And the last version of Windows that I really used like full time was Windows 7. Um, I did spend some time briefly with Windows Vista just before that. And yeah, other than that, I've had some scattered uses of Windows. I used Windows 8 just, you know, just to test it out for a little bit. Didn't like that at all. Um, had tried Windows 10 on Macs using Boot Camp so I could boot camp into a Mac and then play games on Windows. But, you know, I just primarily boot it into Windows to play games, never really had too much experience with the operating system itself. So for this video, I wanted to take my biased personal take as a Mac user and see what Windows 11 was like. Give it a whole new look at it, see if I like it, see if I don't like it, or I should say, see what things I like about it and see what things I don't like about it. And then just kind of give you my first impressions of using Windows 11. So let's get right into it. And uh, one thing I will say right off the bat, and that is just experience with using a uh, Windows laptop. So this has nothing really to do with Windows 11 because this is the hardware of the laptop, but this is a Surface Laptop 4. It is the base AMD version. So it's $1,000, basically the same price as the M1 MacBook Air, a laptop that I love. So I thought this would be a really interesting uh, laptop to try Windows 11 on. And I gotta say, one of the things I noticed right when I started using this, again, not a Windows 11 feature, is just Windows Hello. So I wanna give Microsoft credit here. I really like Windows Hello. Um, it's basically like Face ID on my iPhone. And what do I want on my Mac more than Touch ID? I want Face ID. So this is basically giving me the Face ID experience on Windows 11. And again, this is something that Apple just doesn't have yet. They're still using Touch ID, and that is kind of an advantage to Windows. But now that we are past the lock screen, uh, what's the first thing that jumps out to me about Windows 11? It's the design. So first of all, the wallpaper. Um, you know, usually when we go over uh, new versions of an operating system, do we really have to spend time talking about the wallpaper? Well, I think we do, because on previous versions of Windows, the default wallpaper sometimes I thought was just kind of bad and it didn't inspire me to kind of use the operating system. It, it was a wallpaper that I, I would change in an instant uh, because it would usually have something like the Windows logo in the corner. And it's like, okay, who, who wants to be reminded constantly that you're using Windows? Um, so this having this nice wallpaper here, a little bit more abstract, it actually is a really nice default wallpaper. And this is totally a wallpaper that I would just keep on the system and keep using much like I do with Mac OS. I usually use the default wallpapers because they look so nice and I wanna give credit to Windows here. Very nice default wallpaper. And from what I could see online of other people using it, just a way better collection of wallpapers. Another thing I wanna point out is the start menu or start bar. I forget what it's called again, not a, Windows user really. Um, the start menu over here now is, uh, or is it the taskbar? I don't know. The start menu over here is now centered on previous versions of Windows. It used to be over here in the left hand side and now Microsoft has went ahead and centered it and that is definitely a direct comparison I can draw to Mac OS because on Mac OS you have the dock and that is in the default center position. Of course, you can change the dock to be on like the left-hand side, but when you, when you first open up a Mac, when you first set it up, the dock is right here in the center. So this reminds me a lot of Mac OS. Now what's different from Mac OS is this thing, the start menu. So one of the things I like about this start menu, looking at it for the first time, is I remember the last version of, uh, I think Windows 10, right? Windows 10, uh, when it was in the left-hand corner, 
they had kind of like this metro style UI. It was a UI that they borrowed from Windows Phone and you had these big squares on the right hand side of the start menu. I thought it took up a lot of space. I didn't like the visual design of it. And I really didn't think that user interface made sense on a desktop computer where you're primarily using a mouse or a trackpad and a cursor. Um, this has changed in Windows 11 now. So now when you click on the start menu, you can just see it's really nice, just all your apps laid out and I can actually use a touch screen now, that's new for a Mac user. Uh, you can see all the apps are kind of just laid out over here and I think the spacing on this is good enough to the point where you don't really feel like, you know, uh, if you're using a cursor, like this wasn't designed for it. And then, you know, if you wanna go ahead and use touch, well, you can use touch as well and it seems appropriately spaced for both user interface interactions. And that is something that Windows has to take into consideration, whereas on the Mac, you're really only using a touchpad or a mouse, so you don't have to account for the touchscreen interactions. So I really like how the start menu looks. I like it a lot better than uh, the default start screen for Windows 10. And then there's some recommended stuff in here too. Apple's been doing that a lot recently, especially in like Safari, where like you launch the application and then they're kind of using like, I don't know, like machine learning or just recommended stuff that you might think you want to use. So one of the things I do want to point out at this point is you can see in my recommended, there is a couple screen recorders here uh, that I downloaded from the Windows Store. We can actually open up the Windows Store right now. Um, I try to do this on Windows 10 to get in preparation for this Windows 11 video. And let me tell you, uh, one of the things that really annoys me about Windows 11 is there is no default screen recorder on the system. I feel like that is such a basic feature. Mac OS has it, iOS has it, Android has it. Um, you know, Windows 11 is an operating system that is being released in 2021. And I just feel like not having an inbuilt screen recorder is I don't know, it's such basic functionality. I, I'm almost in disbelief that it's not here. And obviously you can see I have a crude camera set up behind me to record the screen here. Um, yeah, I probably should mention that in the beginning, ignore that, let's just pretend it's movie magic. But uh, the reason why I had to do that is because I could not find a competent screen recorder. The third party screen recorders I tried all have limitations within them and they have time limits. They have uh, video file weirdness where Windows can't even open those video files for some reason. So yeah, no inbuilt screen recorder. I just don't know what Microsoft's thinking here. Now, to be fair, um, I did discover there is something called the Xbox Game Bar. I believe you press Windows G, there you go. So this can record specific apps or gameplay. This, this feature is really designed to record gameplay over here, but it, it is not a full-fledged screen recorder. So before we start typing in the comments, hey Greg, uh, Windows 11 has a screen recorder. This is not what I'm talking about. I wanna record everything that's going on on my screen from the desktop to every single app I open. And I do not want to like come back here and have to re-enable this screen recording for every app I open. It's just silly to me. Maybe I'm wrong. You know, everything I looked up, I could not find an inbuilt screen recorder. If you're a Windows expert and you know a way to record this screen without downloading a third party program, let me know in the comments below. Again, I am a newbie with Windows, so maybe I'm mistaken somewhere, but this is just not a good experience right off the bat for me. Someone who makes a lot of YouTube content, who constantly records their screen on Mac OS and iOS, not having that basic functionality built into Windows is just, it's mind boggling to me that, it, that it's not there. Now, one of the bigger emphasis with Windows 11 was the design language. So let's get back to that. Um, so we talked about the dock being centered. We talked about the wallpaper. Um, I would also like to point out, it's kind of like a parallel universe going from Mac OS to Windows because on Mac OS, when you like download programs to the desktop, they defaultly appear on the right side. Uh, on Windows, they defaultly appear on the left side. So it's interesting and also the menu bar, right? On the top of the Mac, there's like a menu bar up here. And then on Windows, it's on the bottom and the bottom, it's in the bottom right hand over here. And it's just like a whole different experience. Um, some of the UI looks similar. This, this kind of looks like how Apple has Control Center set up now, uh, but you can kind of see how Microsoft has this set up. And it's almost, it's almost like using like 
a bizarro version of, of Mac OS in a way. Um, so one of the things that you know Microsoft really focused on at their event was the design of Windows. And oh man, if you watch that event, you saw like a grown man like going crazy over the design. Uh, listen, there's some parts that are that are nice. Uh, the animations here. So I saw this in the video. Okay, when you click on that, you can kind of see there's a little animation there when you press that. It looks okay. Um, task view. Okay, I guess that's for multiple desktops. We'll look at that later. Uh, oh, there's the widgets. That's uh, something they emphasize in Windows 11. Not sure if that's a new Windows 11 feature though, because I believe I had widgets on Vista and this kind of glass pane on the widgets, uh, this kind of reminds me of Vista in a way. I'm definitely getting Vista vibes from this little glass pane. I, if it had like a green Vista background, I, it pretty much, that looks Vista-ish to me. But yeah, these are widgets and uh, yeah, not, not bad design. You can see emphasis on rounded corners. Again, I'm trying to talk about the design here. Uh, Microsoft said they put a lot more rounded corners into Windows 11. Again, if you're a Mac user, you know that Apple loves to use rounded corners in their design interface from Mac OS, iOS, and everything else. Uh, so more rounded corners, definitely gonna make it look more Apple-like. Again, bizarro universe of using Windows. Uh, Mac OS also has widgets. The widgets are on the right side for Mac OS, and on Windows, they're on the left side. Of, of course, it's gonna be the opposite. But yeah, these, I mean, this looks cool. This is like a nice, this is like a nice view of the widgets and you have like a little search bar over here. Uh, going back, so when I press widgets, you can see a nice little scrolling animation there. That is nice. Uh, you have Microsoft Edge. Does that make an animation? Not really. The files, that's a little pop there. Uh, let's go back to the files actually. Let's see how that looks. So obviously I don't have really any data downloaded onto uh, Windows 11 because I tried to make this like a first time use video, but uh, you can see some of my failed capture attempts with the with the video files, uh, and yeah, that's that's Mac OS like. But I would like to see like the video in the thumbnail, preferably not just the file. So on Mac OS, I believe I recorded a video. Uh, sometimes you can actually see a preview of the video, and you can click right here, and it'll actually play in the center. It doesn't look like that's an option on Windows. Uh, you got OneDrive, this PC, so you can see. Microsoft's built-in services with OneDrive and stuff like that. Kind of like iCloud Drive, front and center. Not a big fan of those folder icons. But uh, yeah, we don't have enough files on here to really explore this, so. Uh, file system stuff. Uh, the animations here, sorry, jumping around a bit. The animations are nice here uh, in some of them. I, I like this one where it kind of scrolls down, but that's playfulness. That's one of the reasons I like using Apple's software is because it feels a little bit more playful, whereas in the past Windows and, and some other operating systems like Android, um, they kind of lack that playfulness. They're, they're very utilitarian. They're very like, let's get to work, let's load the app. Whereas Apple, when you, when you scroll on the iPhone, when you get to the end, it bounces. And then like on Android, it just completely stops. Let's, let's check that out. Does that do that Windows? I bet it just stops, right? So yeah, so no bouncing there, right? So if this was, if this was Apple, when you scroll to the bottom, that would just bounce up a little bit but it just, it's just a static stop there. So it's little touches like that, that as someone who primarily sticks in Apple's ecosystem, that it really doesn't you know, affect the usability of the computer, but it's those nice little touches sometimes that just makes using the operating system more enjoyable and a place where you wanna come back and keep using it. Um, so let's go back to this. So they made a big deal on presentation about multiple desktops. Again, I'm a Windows newbie here, basically. And uh, on Mac OS, you could have multiple desktops for quite a few versions now. And I just wanna see if this works the same way. So you press a new desktop, you get a new desktop, and these should all be different. So if I open up Edge over here, and then I go back to my desktop. Uh, if I go to desktop one, there shouldn't be Edge. Let's open up the store here. So I open up the Microsoft Store, which I think is also newly designed in Windows 11. And if I go back over here, I should be able to go back to desktop number two, where I have the Edge browser. Uh, I believe in the presentation, Microsoft said you can customize each desktop to have like different wallpapers. 
uh, and like aesthetic and stuff like that. So that's pretty cool. So you could have like multiple different desktops. I like doing that on Mac sometimes, especially if I'm having like a full screen program like Final Cut. I like to keep that in its own desktop and then I like to swipe over to the side to access other things. Can I do that on Windows? Because tapping here takes a little bit longer. Okay. Well, it doesn't look like I can slide. Oh, what was that? So trackpads on Windows laptops, by the way. Um, they've gotten a lot better from when I used to use them. Uh, this is a pretty good trackpad, but not as good as Apple's and finicky sometimes to the point where I misclick and it's like, oh, I didn't want to do that. Uh, maybe. Oh. Okay. So you can switch. No. Oh. See, those animations are bad. Again, Windows 11 is in beta. I probably should mention that at the beginning. This isn't, you know, you can't go download Windows 11 yet unless you're in the Insiders program. But um, I'm just gonna go with my first like impressions here. Maybe this is gonna change by the time it's released. So if it's unfair, let me know if it's unfair in the comments, but that is not, you know, they focused on these animations on the bottom here and that presentation and the new icons and how they look more modern, but Oh, that is such a bad animation. It is so much smoother on Mac OS to, to switch between desktops like this. Wow, that is janky. Okay, but you can do it, which is nice, because uh, clicking down here, it's a little bit of a waste of time. Um, let's talk about some other things, too. Uh, let's see, what else is new in Windows that I can remember? <laughs> uh, this is the problem when you're, when you're not, like, used to Windows. It's like, well, what really was new? Uh, oh, yes, so the multitasking. Uh, this is something that Windows has always been better at than Mac OS. So this is a Mac guy telling you that when I use Windows, I like the way that they did multitasking better than Mac OS. So if, I, if this still works correctly the way I remember it, and I believe it does because I watched the presentation, um, I can take something like the Microsoft Store over here and just drag it to the side and it will snap. It will snap on the side and I can go over here to Microsoft Edge and voila. Two split screen apps side by side. On Mac OS, you'd have to like go over here, wait, have a little pop-up menu come up. No, on Windows, uh, you just snap it right to the side. Very, very nice. Um, let's see, go to a website. You can see, you can have it side by side. Do the scrolling that way. Do it this way. So you have two apps side by side. Um, I'm guessing if you wanna change it, split view. That's what it's called on Mac OS, by the way, split view. I don't know if it's called that on Windows. Uh, can you change the si these sides? Yes. Okay, can I not change the size of these? Oh, there, oh, oh, <laughs> okay. What is going on there? Okay, there it is. Now this is a beta, but that is ugly. Let me know in the comments below if you use Windows a lot. Does this do this on Windows 10 when you do the split screen? That is ugly. So on Mac OS, you would see both windows adjust in real time, um, and you could see the size of each window changing. On Windows 11, it just shows you the one application changing size. And, you know, again, I'm only saying this because a big focus of this Windows 11 presentation was the animations and some of the new styles there. Uh, Microsoft was really proud of them, that is ugly. That is really ugly. Ugh, I, I, do, I, I, I do not like that. So I like, I like how you get into split screen. I like the quick uh, interactions there of snapping it to the side, but adjusting these windows, uh, this feels weird. But anyway, let's open up a couple more things. Let's open up the file browser, mail. Uh, what other apps can we open? I downloaded some games already with the Xbox. We'll talk about that in a second. Um, okay, these are all apps that are open. Okay, so another thing that, um, this is new to Windows 11, is you can now actually go beyond this. Uh, so again, way better uh, multitasking or quick multitasking of managing Windows than Mac OS. So I believe you just hover over this now and look at this. So we could do the two side by side like we just did with the snap gestures, we can do, a big one, a little one. We could do one, two, three, and then we could do one, two, three, four. So you can actually have four in each corner. So let's try this one out. Let's do the three. And there you go. You have three 
different apps open at once, one big one on the side, uh, smaller one up here, and then a smaller one over here. Uh, I actually want to see if we can drag them the same way with the snapping gestures. So what if I take my mail account? Okay, yeah, you can drag it into the corner. Look at that. So you drag it into the corner and you can just pick. You can have four different apps open at once in the corners. And then if I resize them, oh, oh, sorry. This is, um, this is such an ugly way of doing this. I don't understand. So when I resize this, I would love if I saw every app resizing at the same time. Small nitpick, right? Who cares? Uh, but I do, because I just feel like this is a very ugly and unintuitive way of showing all of, because all of the apps are getting resized. It's not just this app that's getting bigger. Look, my mail client's gonna shrink, but there's no visual indication of that. Uh, can I go, can I go, okay, I can go up and down, right? Look at this, so look, you can go up and down too. That's nice. You do diagonal. Oh, that's pretty, that is flexible. So look at that, you can, get, look at that. Oh, so these are really adjustable. So I can go diagonal, I can go sideways. So that just kind of, it kind of becomes a standard window after that, right? It's like losing its snap properties. So, but uh, that's just another indication of this. Snapping feature is cool. Uh, the animations for some of this stuff though is still, it's, it's, not, it's not Mac level, let's put it that way. Uh, they, you know, a lot of people drew comparisons of saying Windows 11 looked like the Mac. Uh, some parts of it do. You know what, let's actually look in settings. Uh, I remember this being a huge issue when I used to use Windows. Not really an issue, but well, it kind of bothered me how, how quick you could scratch the paint. So let's go into settings. Okay, this looks modern. It's like a nice modern settings menu. Nothing inherently wrong here. Looks pretty easy to understand. You have the system, you go into the display. Change your brightness, your scale. All, all this stuff looks pretty normal. Let's go over to apps. You can go default apps, apps and features. Um, so all this stuff looks good, but let's go, let's go back into the display. Now let's see, if we get a couple settings deep, does it still look this nice or does the paint start to scratch off a little bit? Okay, so far so good. Let's go to advanced display. It's usually, it's usually a couple, no, this is looking fine. Okay, that's, that's good. I remember, I remember uh, in older versions of Windows, you'd start seeing some older dialogue boxes at this point. Uh, what about graphics? What if we go into here? Are we gonna see something? No, this all looks good. So I wanted to see if we could still kind of scratch the paint here. Uh, it looks better than I remember, but going like into something like these settings over here for the device manager. And, you know, I'm starting to see these look like older dialogue boxes. They don't even look like they're scaled properly for the display. Like the, the text here looks a little bit fuzzy. Uh, so you can see that as we go deeper into settings, we start to see some older, some older looking window styles that don't necessarily go along with the, the design language of uh, Windows 11 over here. Maybe I'm wrong, maybe this is new. Again, I am a Microsoft Windows noob over here. Uh, but you tell me as we go into like these, you know, driver settings, as we go menus deep, uh, this is looking older to me. So you let me know, is this, is this an older style or is this brand new? And if it is brand new, I don't think it looks that nice. This is, uh, <laughs> yeah, this is looking older in style and stuff like that. So uh, the main settings that most people are gonna deal with, the way they have it laid out, perfectly fine. So for basic users, I'm, I'm sure it's fine. Advanced users probably don't even care what the settings menus look like as they dig into them, as long as they can change those settings. Uh, but it's just something I notice with Windows is there's an inconsistency sometimes with the design on the front end and then the design on the back end from really old legacy Windows kind of cruft. Um, so one big focus of this Windows 11 event, one of the reasons why I was really excited to try out Windows 11 was the integration of Xbox and Xbox Game Pass. I think that 
Xbox Game Pass uh, on Windows 11 is really going to make Microsoft like excel in selling games. So obviously Windows was always the dominant gaming platform for PC, um, but they never really had that much control of the storefront interaction. That was always done by third parties like Steam, uh, Origin, all these other third party stores you have now. Um, what Microsoft has a huge advantage with this Xbox app right now is primarily with Game Pass. So Game Pass is getting even more popular. It's like a subscription service. You can get it for as low as $10 a month and then 15 if you want online play. But basically you get access to all these games. Now I've already signed into Xbox. I have Game Pass and you can see we got a really large selection of games to choose from here and you can just download this right onto your Windows PC and start playing. Obviously this is a Surface Laptop 4, it is not a gaming laptop, so I don't know how these games will run, but one of the main reasons why I was excited to check out Windows 11 is because I am looking to eventually build a gaming PC and when I saw Microsoft's strategy with Game Pass and them leaning into this storefront on Windows, I just said like that is like a huge advantage for them and that is great for me because I own an Xbox, I have Game Pass, and then the minute I build my gaming PC, I'm just gonna have access to all these games to play and it's it's like I don't even have to purchase a bunch of new games as soon as I get my PC and, and that is something that I am really looking forward to. And yeah, then you get the day one releases and everything. So I think this is a really cool feature to have. Uh, I heard that Windows 11 also has performance improvements and optimization to make gaming an even better experience than it was on Windows 10. And a big chunk of that Microsoft presentation was taken up by games. So games is very important to Microsoft strategy going into Windows 11. Oh, I remember them making a really, really big stink about tabs and, and how, you know, this is Microsoft Edge, an Edge feature. So let's load up a bunch of tabs over here. Um, and then let's try out what they called uh, vertical tabs. So I got a bunch of tabs here. You can see the tab layout here. And then I believe you right click, you should be able to turn on vertical tabs. There it is. And now you have, well, okay. So you have your tabs laid out vertically over here, obviously. Um, but one thing I do, okay, I can click this. Okay, so that's gonna minimize it and not cut into my content. But then you can't see the names over here. So maybe this is nice if you have a bunch of tabs and this list view is better uh, able to categorize them. But what I don't like is when you go to expand the tab to see what the name of the website is, it takes over your content, which I, I don't like. It cuts into whatever you're looking at. And then, um, when you don't do that, you just see an icon. So for these sites, I'm familiar with them, but if I'm on a site where I'm not familiar with the icon, I'm not gonna know what it is just by glancing at it. And I have to go over here to expand the details. Whereas if you just go to the regular horizontal tab layout, even though I have all these tabs, there's still text on them and I don't ever have to expand anything. So I can see that's The Verge, that's nine to five Mac, and these all other ones say new tab, obviously. So. They made such a big stink about vertical tabs. It was a big part of the presentation, but uh, I think I'm just gonna stick to horizontal tab layout. So obviously there's some Windows 11 features I can't test out here, and that's because of the form factor of this device uh, being the Surface Laptop 4. And uh, I just wanna mention them though, because I did think they were cool and I did think they deserved to be called out. Uh, one of them was the adaptability of the display when you're using a tablet device or a laptop where you can detach the screen. So Windows obviously has a bunch of different manufacturers, tons of different Windows devices, but say you have like a Surface Pro and you have the keyboard attached, well, that's gonna condense all these icons down to make more sense with a cursor interface. And then uh, when you detach it and just use it as a tablet, those icons are going to expand farther out to give it bigger touch targets and have them more spaced out so you don't uh, misclick anything with your finger. I thought that was really smart. I never liked the dual design approach of having that Windows 8 style tablet mode on Windows 8 and then obviously I think that carried over a bit to Windows 10. Uh, people who want Windows, they want the desktop. They don't want that tablet optimized mode. And I think Microsoft focusing in on just making the desktop more of a touchscreen friendly interaction is ultimately the right choice. People want Windows, they bought you know 
they bought the form factor, but they still wanna use the Windows desktop that they know and love. And I thought that was a much better implementation, at least from what I saw with their presentation. Again, I haven't had a chance to test it out, so who knows if it's actually implemented well. Um, but again, this was just a first impressions video, so I don't think we have to dive too deep into this video of a Mac user's first impressions of Windows 11. And let me give you the summary of everything I just said here and my overall thoughts on it. So. There's a lot of changes that I appreciate with Windows 11, even things as small as the wallpaper changes here. Um, and things like centering the start menu. Honestly, as a Mac user, it looks a bit more at home here on the Windows side of things. The start menu getting a redesign. All these new icons and stuff like that. Some of the animations when clicking on these icons are nice. It's a little bit more refined. It's a little bit more nice to use. Um, but uh, there's things I don't like still, and this is not a revolution. This Windows 11 is not a fresh new start for Windows. This still very much feels like Windows 10 to me. And even though it does have a coat of new paint in some areas, even though some things are nice, uh, I still see some cruft there when going through the settings menus. I still see uh, really bad animations in practice and just some of the other user interface things like, uh, you know, the scrolling and stuff like that um, doesn't have any of that playfulness to it that Mac OS and iOS seem to have. But I do appreciate what they're doing uh, with gaming on Windows. I think obviously a lot of people choose Windows to play games on it and I'm very interested to see how this Xbox Game Pass strategy works out on Windows. Uh, but yeah, you know, as a Mac OS guy, I, I still much prefer Mac OS. This isn't necessarily the revolution I was looking for with all these visual changes. And it's still Windows, so first impressions are, it's okay. Uh, <laughs> sorry, if you were expecting more, if you're expecting a Mac person to be converted over to Windows, this isn't your video. Uh, but let me know, uh, would you want to see even more content on me diving even deeper into Windows? Or is this like, you know, again, it was a basic first impressions use. Don't expect like a deep dive into settings. There's other Windows channels that'll do that. But do you want to see even more content on Windows going forward from me? Is this, is this perspective as someone who uses Mac useful? Or is this like, hey, do, Greg, this was the first time thing. Don't revisit it. Uh, also, again, speaking of Windows content, like I said, I just got the Surface Laptop 4 just to install Windows 11 on it. Would you like to see any content on this laptop? Because actually, you know, using Windows 11, I feel like I have more opinions on this hardware than I do on Windows 11, but that's not what this video is about. So if you want to know anything about um, the Surface Laptop 4 from my perspective, uh, let me know in the comments below. But yeah, at the end of the day, Windows 11, is still Windows and that's my take on it. So let me know in the comments below if you liked the video. If you did, make sure you give me a like. If you wanna see more from the channel, if you have suggestions for Windows type content that I should try out, I'm open to it. I'm gonna be reading the comments. So again, leave that in the comments below. But if you like this video, you wanna see more from the channel, make sure you're subscribed. If you wanna connect more with me, make sure you check out some of my links in the description below. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you all in the next video. Take care, everyone.